Welcome to BeerAndIron.com's Pork and Spuds in a Cast Iron Camp Dutch Oven Recipe. We're headed out to the great outdoors with our 12-inch cast iron Dutch oven to enjoy the evening and to share a meal. It's a little windy today. We're going to be using the windshield. We'll be creating this meal in a 12-inch cast iron Camp Dutch oven, but it can be modified for any Dutch oven as well as prepared inside on the stove top and in your oven. This little pot we found for free. It's a 12 inch regular or shallow Dutch oven. We are at a campsite and we'll be using the fire pit as the setting for our cook. We're gonna be setting that pot over a very hot bed of coals later and we'll be using this time to kind of preheat the pot before introducing it to the extreme heat. What do you think of this windshield? There'll be a video soon on how to make this windscreen. And speaking of future videos, if you'd like to follow us here on BeerAndIron.com and want to be updated on future videos, be sure to give us a little thumbs up, hit that little subscribe button, and don't forget to hit that little dinner bell. I call this recipe Pork and Spuds. This recipe is very simple and only has a few ingredients. Start with four to six pork loin rib chops Thick or thin cut is okay. Today, we're gonna to be using the boneless pork loin chop, two bell peppers, three medium russet potatoes, a few sprigs of rosemary, fresh if you got it, two cans of cream of mushroom soup, about two to three tablespoons of butter, a little extra is A-OK, -okay, some seasoned breadcrumbs, and a beer like a mild lager or a low IBUL. While the coals are heating up, Take this time to prepare the ingredients. Coarsely chop two bell peppers and have the chopped pieces at the ready. You can pre-prepare the bell peppers before leaving for camp, but today I decided just to do this in camp. We're gonna store those bell peppers in another container until we're ready to use them. We're just gonna use the plastic bag we picked them up from in the store. Now for the potatoes. Just chop them into chunks. We want nice bite-sized pieces about a half inch. Those coals are looking perfect. I'm gonna use the grate from the fire pit to elevate my Dutch oven so I don't have to bend over so far to get to my pot. A nice garbage can lid with the handle ripped off works perfect as a makeshift fire pit. We're gonna start off by frying or searing our pork before setting the Dutch oven to bake. We're gonna be heating that cast iron Dutch oven at temperatures toward 450 degrees Fahrenheit or 235 degrees Celsius. I always start out with more briquettes than I think I'll need and set some aside to light the next batch of briquettes. Especially on a windy day like today, that second batch of coals will work as our heat for baking and to keep the chill off us while we're cooking. We'll be keeping out about 40 briquettes, give or take, to sear with. We'll need to count out more than the times two guideline for our briquette count. Today is a windy day. These numbers are just guidelines and nowhere near exact. Just refer to the video on how to heat the cast iron camp Dutch oven for more details. There's a few things that holds true with this heating method. First, it will initially create a very hot pot surface and it'll sear that meat real well. Second, the tightly spaced briquettes will have a tendency to suffocate themselves in the middle. We'll start with this windscreen and eventually remove it to let some of that air in. Now we're ready to cook. Once that pot starts to show those little wisps of smoke from the surface, go ahead and add a couple of tablespoons of butter and let it heat up and toast. Now go ahead and add the pork and sear it up good. Add a sprig or two of rosemary and leave that rosemary to the side of the pork so the pork stays in contact with the surface of the pot. While the meat is searing, open and have ready the cans of mushroom soup. Have the breadcrumbs ready for the pouring and your cooking beer opened. We pulled off the windshield to let the coals breathe a bit. Sometimes when the sizzling sound weakens, it's not that we need to cover the fire more, but we may need to open it up. This windscreen is so versatile that you can even leave the backside open and block the wind from the direction it's blowing from. Be sure to give that pot a good turn about every 10 minutes or so. Now we're talking. That color is perfect. Fish out those stems of rosemary out of the pot, but leave any rosemary that broke free right in the bottom of that pot. 
We'll need to pull the pork from the pot while we add the breadcrumbs to the bottom. We're using the lid from this pot upside down and nearby as our surface to hold the hot meat. Remove the Dutch oven from the heat and set it nearby. We're going to add about a cup of breadcrumbs to the pot and anywhere from about 8 to 12 ounces or more of beer to create a breadcrumb batter. Add the beer a bit at a time so you don't end up with a soupy batter. You just want a nice base to set the pork back on. This will keep the pork a bit off the surface of the pot and let it cook more evenly. Not to mention, it'll add a nice bit of flavor. Now set the pork back in the pot. You can either just lay the pieces of pork on the top of the breadcrumbs or you can roll them around in that batter-like base and coat the pork. We're just going to lay our pork right on top. Add all the chopped potatoes, but make sure you have some headroom here. We still have more ingredients to add, and the lid needs to go back on, and we need to reserve some airspace for baking. Add two cans of cream of mushroom soup. Save the cans. A rubber or silicone spatula works better here, and if you forgot yours at home like I did, just use whatever you got. Hey, there'll be less to wash later, right? Just smear it all about as evenly as you can. Don't worry about making it look like icing on a cake. This will even out as it cooks. Trust me on this. Using one of the soup cans, fill it about half full with beer. And take the other can and wash it back and forth to get as much of the soup out as you can. And then add that beer to the pot. The pot ingredients may look dry. This is not a stew or a soup. It's a bake. I want you to think baked potato. There's plenty of moisture in there. You'll see. Now add the bell peppers on top. And that's where we're going to pause and get ready to cook. In that pot, we have our breadcrumbs topped with pork covered with potatoes, cream of mushroom soup, and a bit more beer as well as those chopped bell peppers. Now is the time to add salt and pepper to taste if you so choose. I'm going to cover this pot with the lid. We're going to be baking this dish at a goal of 350 degrees Fahrenheit or 175 degrees Celsius. Let's use the times 2 guideline. We have a 12 inch cast iron Dutch oven. Multiply the diameter of 12 by 2. That gives us 24. Divide 24 by 3. That gives us 8. We're going to use 8 briquettes under the oven and the rest, 16, on the top. For a video on how to heat the cast iron Dutch oven, there's a link in the description. There's our eight briquettes. Set the oven on top and shield it from the wind. Hey, why is our wooden spatula over there in the dirt? This recipe is going to cook for about 45 minutes. We'll turn the pot and lid about every 10 minutes. We want two things to happen here and hopefully at the same time. We want our pork to come to temperature at about 145 degrees Fahrenheit or 65 degrees Celsius. And we want our potatoes to be soft and cooked. The dish is not done cooking until both have happened. The pork that's cooked into temperature and the nice soft cooked potatoes. Turning that Dutch oven is a must. We'll turn it about every 10 minutes. Here's how to do it. First, notice the handle direction. Next, turn the whole pot about one third of a turn in one direction. Third, turn the lid in the opposite direction until the handle is in the same position as it was before. It may not look turned, but it is. You'll ask, why is the handle in the same place? I'll give you a second to think about that. And if you're still baffled, comment below and we'll have a conversation. Eventually, you'll start to smell the aroma. The bell peppers will be the telltale that things are getting close. There'll be some steam escaping from around the lid's edge. For the video, let's take a peek. I normally don't lift my lid, but I know you all want to see what's going on in that pot. Look at there. It's perfect. Do you see that? It's starting to sprinkle rain. No worries, we're getting close. You've likely noticed the fire chimney with the heating briquette sitting near this pot. 45 to 60 minutes is a longer cook time, and we often have to add briquettes as we cook. And this is especially true if the weather conditions are challenging. Once the meal is considered done, the meat is up to temperature and the potatoes are fully cooked, pull the lid from the pot. 
pour over some breadcrumbs to the top of the meal. Look inside that pot and you'll see the moisture that's been created as we cook this meal. Do you see those bubbling edges? Just a nice light coat of crumbs will do the trick. Place the lid back on the pot and just load the lid with briquettes. If this were in a home oven, we'd be putting that oven on broil. We want a lot of heat to the top to really toast those breadcrumbs, but it's not going to take long. Peek a couple of three times to make sure they don't burn. That's a lot of heat. Absolutely perfect. Now remove all the heat from the top of the pot and get ready to chow down. Use a straw brush to clean off some of the ash from the lid. This is optional, but something I often do. A hot cast iron fajita skillet or a regular small skillet works great when eating in the outdoors. It seems that food cools quickly in the wind and rain as we're having today. A nice paper bowl will work well too to serve this meal. I hope you enjoyed this recipe, pork and spuds. Pork and potatoes cooked in a camp cast iron Dutch oven. This is an easy recipe to create and it can be prepared at camp or even cooked at home. What a great evening it was. If you want to see me haul a cast iron camp Dutch oven on a bicycle on the Weezer River Trail in Idaho and cook this recipe in an 8 inch cast iron Dutch oven in the dark, be sure to follow the link in the description below. I'm glad you all came by and watched this recipe video. Be sure to give us a little thumbs up and hit that subscribe button and really and truly, don't forget to hit that little dinner bell. You all keep cooking in those cast iron black beauties and enjoying those frosted glasses of that fermented barley pop. We'll see you next time on BeerAndIron.com.